Ah, Ghost in the Shell, Deus Ex. All of these are good pieces of fiction that portray electronics at their best and at their worst. In many cyberpunk stories, the main theme revolves around artificial intelligence, either in the form of robots or attaching flesh to electronics. Certain trials are already planning it, and believe it or not, now is the time to start that debate. Before I begin, I just want to give one little disclaimer. I am not going to be talking about prosthetics that can help amputees become more mobile or exoskeletons that help disabled people finally walk. This video will purely focus on the concept of healthy humans sawing off a body part and replacing it with a robot body part. This is called cybernetic augmentation or enhancement. It's enabled me to do my craft, to do my one passion in life. Taking pictures is as blinking my eye. You know, now when I take chances, when I take risks, the whole world gets to see what I see. I want it to be better. And I want to be the best of the best, part of the elite. Football's always been a big part of my life. And uh, that's what happened. I, I, I didn't think I was going to get to play ball with my son. And to be able to come out here and play ball with him, it's like a new life. It's super cool. Now when we play football, we can, he can like throw way further. Run faster, jump higher. If I want to be the best, then that's what I got to do. I actually can feel things. You know, you can, you know, I pick up the football, I, I can feel the pigskin on my fingers. I play the piano a million times more than I ever played it. It's easier, I'm enjoying it more, and that's why everybody knows me, is for my serif augmentations. Thanks to serif's augmentation, I see the world in a whole new light. I see it like I've never seen it before. It just feels like a, a real arm, but better. You know, you feel like a, a pro athlete with it on. It's been really a revelation. It truly, truly has changed my life. To start off, it's fit to say that the question must not be if humans are capable of such technology. After all, we've come such a long way with our current development, and in this day and age with so much information and connectivity, we are better equipped than ever. What really sets it apart is that this new technology has changed how people live their lives nowadays. Now, I'm sure people here remember the 2000 DVDs cost around $200 or euros, Nokia mobile phones became popular, and I also remember getting my brand new PlayStation 2 for Christmas. If you were to travel to the 1970s, only 30 years prior, you would amaze the people who saw what you had brought. Now, picture this. Little you from the 2000 travels to 2015 half the time, and little you would also be amazed to see pocket PCs, touchscreens, and personal drones. There you go. Due to this fierce competition between companies, technology is advancing faster and faster. At the current pace, the next 100 years will be like 20,000 years of innovation. I can't even imagine what we'll have in 2180, the year of Mass Effect, or, or the year 2500, the year of dead space. All this advancement and current speculation, it is very easy to see cybernetics taking a role in humanity. Despite this, little debate has actually gone underway about the ethics of advancement technology. Progressives argue in favor of them because they believe that they will be the next step of human evolution. People would have superior strength and agility, enabling them to become superior in accomplishing tasks. <laughs> It's very different to know that the earth is moving than actually to feel it inside your body. I think it's a very different type of experience. I realize how alive our planet is and how unaware we are. People are very uh, against it. People don't really accept it or don't understand why you do it if you don't need it. To reuse a well-used phrase, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed yet. We think there's something in cyborgism and there's something in this intimate blend of humans and technology which will be really important for, for our industry and for creativity in it uh, and for how brands uh, connect and engage with consumers. Cyborgism is really important for the industry because it is going to create the next wave of creativity. We're going to see a whole wave of creativity emerge because of how humans are integrating with technology. When people change, how they engage with media, how they engage with brands, how they make decisions change. So understanding technology is really important for, for brands. It's really nice to have this own uh, like new way of creating art. Rather than using low-waste technology as, as a tool, we can use technology as part of our body, create new senses and new body parts and change our experience. 
which is uh, like change our perception of reality. It is like our sense, uh, our senses can be very limited depending on who you compare with. And what we absolutely think we're going to see is more and more people electing to embrace technology in more intimate ways. The screens are already starting to, to disappear and, and vanish and that's where we'll see the mainstream in this. We'll be listening to things, we'll be seeing things directly in a mixed reality way, we'll be feeling things whether it's through smart rings and or other kinds of smart devices. As screens start to make way for new ways of perceiving data uh, and, and new ways of um, exploring the world and, and connecting with the data and information and that is what's got big, and, uh, big consequences for brands and a big consequences for aging. Others will also argue that cybernetic enhancements will allow humans to become more immune to certain diseases that are incurable at the moment. Should these shiny new toys come to light, their production would probably be controlled by companies while also being marketed and sold. We'd see them on billboards, magazines, commercials and other advertisements. However, with all the promises that progressives make, I still have to criticize them in regards to these advancements. I have three reasons why humans shouldn't adopt cybernetic enhancements. The first two reasons are not that big but still valid. So the first reason is because humans become vulnerable to hacking for the first time in history. Here's the thing. Every electronic has a remote control, so this begs the question, if a master control exists and who would have possession over it? It's also worth stating that the average human will have little to no knowledge about the fact that they're putting into their body and will place their entire trust into the corporation itself. Humans move their body parts with neural links that come from the brain, so in order for us to move our augmented body parts at will, they must also be linked to our brain. A horrifying scenario predicts a certain individual hacking or taking control of neural links in the human brain, which would also gain access to other parts of it, effectively controlling these individuals precisely like a person moving a pawn on a chessboard. Cyber terrorist or corporate dictator could easily use them to attack people or steal a large sum of valuables. It's a pure example of humans becoming so dependent on technology that it ends up controlling us. The second reason why I oppose cybernetic enhancements is because of how the relationship would be between the augmentation and our body. Humans are great at building things of all shapes and sizes, but it's still worth noting that no human machine is foolproof. Fancy electronics with a CPU-like system are no different because every single computer has bugs in it. As an example, in the game Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, some of the main characters have implants and including prosthetics, but look, this is a similar situation, which go haywire at multiple times and cause bodily harm. You rely too much on those things. City. A worst case scenario is that a failure in these things could result in damaging the body. What really bugs me is that a large number of people have always used the same argument. Yes, the past try was a failure, but I can do it better. Well, you can only improve it so far, but the thing is, there will still be accidents you can't predict. Our flesh and bones are a natural part of our biology, and they are best fit for physical action. The last and main reason why I'm opposed to cybernetics is that we will in fact be losing our humanity. Let me explain this further. In this exact timeline, companies will most definitely begin competing against each other for supremacy in the market. That will mean they will be improving the quality of the augmentations as well as making more types in the shape of other body parts. Marketing for these new pieces will also go through the roof and there will be people who will just want to have them. Over time, it will become more socially acceptable to replace our organic material with these robotic parts. In 2010, author Andrew Pickering wrote a book called Cybernetic Brain, The Sketches of Another Future, where he described a group of military scientists developing a mechanical cybernetic brain which is superior to a natural one. I mean, do you not see this? The simple thought of replacing such an important body part is just terrifying and only questions what we can do with the rest of our body to make it less organic and how we will indeed suffer both the best and most definitely the worst of it. In the movie Ghost in the Shell, Scarlett Johansson's character the Major is nothing but a robot that has a human brain in it. What would happen if the company decided to replace the Major's natural brain with a synthetic one which would be superior in all forms but not be organic at all? The Major would have absolutely no human body parts and wouldn't even be a cyborg. She would be nothing but a robot that can be destroyed by a powerful enough EMP blast. 
Is humanity's future really destined to look like Robocop just so we can have certain functions that we really don't need? And what about children? Their bodies aren't even fully grown. Will they really share the same fate as us? Quite easy to see that this isn't human evolution, it's human extinction. We as a species would die out, and the only thing that will remain of our legacy are just humanoid electronics. We might as well let Skynet win. I personally am not against technological development. Far from it. I only believe that we must learn how to marry technological progression with wisdom because it affects all of us. This must be a part of the ethics that all governments and scientists should learn if we are to sustain our human race. I mean, it is not on us to play God. There's no one who really understands the risk to individuality, identity, messing with the human soul. You've heard this speech before from your competitors. And now, Hanker Robotic serves it with no. milky sake. Hey, 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 hey. Ah! This is what I'm talking about.